So many different times in my life I've, I've played with broken or hurt things. Broken foot, broken leg, broken hand, broken arm, broken sternum, broken collarbone. I could keep going if I just thought more about bones. <laughs> Why, man? Because I, I loved it. I loved playing the game. I was passionate about it. One of the reasons I even get encouraged at seeing all of you here. Do you know why I get encouraged by that? Is because you could be anywhere doing a lot of different things, but you chose to be here. Some shows don't need a celebrity narrator to introduce the show. But this show does. In a world filled with endless opportunities, why would two men who have built 13 multi-million dollar businesses altruistically invest five hours per day to teach you the best practice business systems and moves that you can use. Because they believe in you. And they have a lot of time on their hands. They started from the bottom, now they're here. It's the Thrive Time Show starring the former U.S. Small Business Administration's Entrepreneur of the Year, Clay Clark, and the entrepreneur trapped inside an optometrist's body, Dr. Robert Zutner. Two men, eight kids, co-created by two different women. 13 multi-million dollar businesses. We started from the bottom, now we're here. We started from the bottom, and we'll show you how to get here. We started from the bottom, now we're here. We started from the bottom, now we're here. We started from the bottom, and now we're at the top. Teaching you the systems to get what we got. Colton Dixon's on the hooks. I break down the books. Z's bringing some wisdom and the good looks. As the father of five, that's why I'm alive. So if you see my wife and kids, please tell them hi. It's the CNC up on your radio. And now, three, two, one, here we go. We started from the bottom, now we here. We started from the bottom, and we'll show you how to get here. We started from the bottom, now we here. We started from the bottom, now we here. We started from the bottom, now we here. We started from the bottom, and we'll show you how to get here. We started from the bottom, now we here. We started from the bottom, now we here. All right, well, Arthur, uh, full disclosure, uh, today's episode might be sponsored by Dayquil. I've had enough Dayquil to uh, kill a small horse. <laughs> So, uh, uh, but uh, feeling good, feeling good. So what we're talking today, uh, what we're talking about today is the journey from buyer to big fans. And so for anyone working in the area of customer service, the whole goal is to wow the customer. The whole goal is to wow the customer. Right. To the point that they actually come back and bring some friends. Yet few businesses today seem to be able to accomplish this. I'm gonna read you a little excerpt here from the book Raving Fans by Ken Blanchard and uh, his uh, partner there, and he says, your customers are only satisfied because their expectations are so low and because no one else is doing better. Just having satisfied customers isn't good enough anymore. If you really want a booming business, you have to create raving fans. So in your mind, why do most businesses simply produce merely satisfied customers? As, you know, as, as, as the Chick-fil-A guy yeah. who tries to wow customers every day, why are most businesses out there just merely satisfying customers in your mind? Well, I, I think a lot of it is just, it's easy. I mean, it's easy to just satisfy customers. It's, uh, they're just taking care of their basic needs. Okay. And sadly, that's how it is. But yet, and that's why their business is functioning at an, at an average level. Well, now, one of the things I've noticed at Chick-fil-A, and you know, since I've known you, I, I think I'm like really... I thought I was a Kool-Aid drinker for Chick-fil-A, but a lot of times when you know someone who works at a restaurant, you're mm -hmm. like, well, I'd never go there. You know, After you hear about the, the stuff that happens behind the scenes, you kind of go, well, I would never go back to that place. Well, Chick-fil-A, the more I hear about what happens behind the scenes, the more I want to come back. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that you guys do that's different. So I'm going to read you off some, some uh, kind of businesses that are known for me standardized mediocrity. And if there's any other services out there that you can think of, just let me know. But one is we have the gas station, restaurant, truck stop, gift shop. That one, you know, where you go and mm -hmm. it's the hybrid there. Um, then you have the tag agency. It seems like every tag agency in America is pretty rough all the time. Then you have the motel. You've got the cable company where you call and they say, well, we'll call you back sometime between 9 and 5 if you can just wait by our house. We'll 
send somebody by today between nine and five. Yeah. You've got lawn care, the contractor. You've got the disc jockey. You might not know if they're going to show up for the party or not. And then you have the fast food industry. So why is are it? We're at the bottom of that. Li we're at the bottom of that list. Yeah. So is there <laughs> any other industries that you can think of in your mind that are kind of every time you call them, you're, you're you're expecting some sort of level of mediocrity? I guess I should have studied it beforehand, huh? Well. I mean, is there any other services that you can think of that just frustrate you? Like the sign, sign companies. I've noticed I cannot get a sign company to call back at a decent speed there. Car repair places. Car repair places. So let's pretend for a second that, um, you know, you're another restaurant owner. You have a lot of competitors in the fast food industry. Right. Why are those people not wowing people the way Chick-fil-A does? What's going on? Well, for me, I think um, the root is they don't care. They really don't care. And, and in a lot of the fast food industry, Chick-fil-A is so different than them because they have owner-operators that are in the restaurant. I mean, you know, when, if a customer doesn't eat with Chick-fil-A, it's not just about Chick-fil-A. It's about my, it's, you know, it affects me. It affects my profit, my family's profit. Um, I mean, not a good way to say it, but, yeah. um, but that's, um, that's kind of how it works. So let me ask you this, though. This is what I'm going to ask you. I'm just qu questioning your, for the guy watching this who might be, Devil's advocate sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people that own the restaurant. Their whole family's livelihood is based upon the profitability of the restaurant. Yeah. Yet their restaurant still stinks. <laughs> and that's over... That's not even mean enough, really. That's, that's yeah. and, and So what accountability systems does Chick-fil-A have, do you have in place to ensure that you and your store, other store owners, store owners don't... Uh, kind of get down to that level of mediocrity. What systems do you have in place to make sure that you're at a high standard? Sure. Well, uh, you know, when it's coming to customer service, it it really starts with at the top. You know, what is what is your what is your leaders doing? You know, what are they paying attention to? And and what are the expectations? It's really about what the expectations are. And so for us, I don't look at myself and say I'm competing against the other Chick-fil-A stores or other fast food places. I'm competing against myself. Okay. Is this the best I can do? Is this the best my leadership can do? But unfortunately, I think a lot of people, they've reached the pinnacle when they've, I have a restaurant. Woo! Okay, now I can relax. You know, now the money's going to come rolling in. Okay. And they just sit back and that's not the do case. Do you get a lot of pressure from corporate to do a great job? Absolutely. Okay. Chick-fil-A is a phenomenal company, and they expect they not only expect us to um, do a good job, but it's a requirement. They actually will will look at what other stores are doing. So if my if my customer service starts lacking, but the store right next to me is not lacking, they're going to say, "Hey, how come he can do it right?" I'm, and I'm not making up this example. I went in today to a, a restaurant, and I was there, um, and I just on the way here, and I was just. Uh, and, the, the restroom was like an abomination. It was like a, it was like something out of a out of a Mad Max film. Mm -hmm. Just nasty, you know. And then then I I go to get I'm trying to get some vegetarian sushi. That's what I'm trying to. That's what I'm on this weird diet right now, and I'm so I'm eating a lot of vegetarian stuff, you know. So I'm trying to get vegetarian sushi, and I start to think, I don't know if I want this vegetarian sushi from this place. <laughs> now I just want to know why. Are, how are your bathrooms clean? Your bathrooms are always clean. Yeah, um, it's because we clean them. Okay. I mean, that's the simple version, but it's one of those that uh, my management all the time quotes me and says, um, you say this all the time, Arthur, and I always forget what I'm saying, uh, but it's um, the results we get are, is because of what we focus on. Okay. And so if the bathrooms are important to you, you know, and the bathrooms are very important to Chick-fil-A guests, uh, then we're going to make sure it's right. But we have to create what we call systems to make sure that that bathroom gets done. It doesn't happen. It's not like there's somebody wandering around out there that loves to clean bathrooms. I've never found an employee that You're just, not into that? No. Okay. It's not me. And so we will put a system in place that says, for example, every 30 minutes, somebody is going to physically leave their spot, wherever it may be, whether they work in the lobby or the you know, drive through whatever it may be, and they're going to go inspect the bathroom and put their eyeballs in place and say, what, what, what does it look like? What does it smell like? I mean, all those different things and say, let's make sure it's right. Well, I had it here, and this is one of the things I wanted to throw out here <laughs> for you. I brought some of the checklists that I, I knew that were kind of Chick-fil-A checklists. So um, I'm going to pull up some of these, but here we go. So this is like the utility person, let's say. I don't know if you guys can see this. Mm -hmm. Don't point this camera here. Hey, the utility person. And you've got on here, let's see here. We've got... Uh, Sweeping the parking lot. Three times a day. 
Then we have put the rocks back in the flower beds. <laughs> um, every time we go outside. Then you have remove trash from flower beds, water flowers. Yep, um, at least once a day. Now, how does that happen? So I'd like, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take this, uh, I'm kind of like the czar of the telestrator, uh, kind of like a John Madden of uh, the, this, this board okay. here. So this is your, your Chick-fil-A, okay? So we're in here, this is the Chick-fil-A, and uh, let's just pretend that right here, this is kind of like the main uh, entrance over here. I think you have an entrance kind of in the front end on, the, on, on two other sides. Yep. So you have an entrance here, you have an entrance here, right? Uh, and we actually have a back door. And you have an entrance here, and then you have a back door. Okay, so the back door is right here. Now, roughly, where are you standing most of the day as manager, owner, operator guy? Where are you? Well, the owner, operator guy, I'm going to be in the back in the office um, working on the business rather than in the business. Where is the office? And is it upstairs? No, it's in the back. So kind of back in this yeah. area? Yeah. Okay. So Arthur, you're, you're, you're camped out over here. But every, it seems like on this checklist, like every half hour, something has to happen. Correct. We create these checklists so that um, we don't have to have a manager involved every step of the way. Okay. We have to have a trustworthy employee that's going to follow that, that checklist to a T. Yeah. And then the manager comes along and will you know, we'll glance and make sure things are done. So the bathrooms are kind of in this area up here, roughly. That's correct. Okay, so you have the bathrooms that are up here. And so you're over here. Now, a lot of businesses can't figure this out. I know I had businesses for years where I couldn't figure this out. But how do you how do you make sure that this bathroom gets clean as the manager? So what, what do you do? Does this person check in with you once a week or once? How do you know, as manager, how do you know that bathroom got cleaned? Well, all these checklists that we do, yeah. they're, um, they get turned in per shift. Okay. And so at the end of each shift, the, um, the management that's in charge of that shift will make sure that all of those get turned in. Now, if they turn them in and I happen to go through them, and I don't go through them every day, I don't need to. Yeah. Um, but if they turn them in and I look and say, why wasn't this checked off? You know, then then we have some issues. Now, if we if we go in and they're checked off and uh, we go out there, say I go to the restroom and I find out that this was just checked off and it wasn't done, yeah. then we have a whole nother issue where we talk about, um, you know, they either don't know or don't care and if they don't, you know, if they don't know, well, then we'll train them. If they don't care, then we promote them to customer status. Oh, nice, nice. Promote them to customer status. Um, now, do they? Do you? Do you follow up on the systems every? Again, they turn them in at five o'clock every day, or when do these people? When do the people on your team turn in those checklists? Well, for us, we'll probably have shift change between two and four o'clock. Two and four. Um, and but somewhere between two and four, um, the management will kind of gather them together and turn it in. So let's just kind of go through your day roughly. What time do you get there typically? Is the owner operator manager guy? Um, generally eight or nine. Okay, so you get there. Let's just pretend you said eight. Okay, so eight you arrive. What time is the shift change? Uh, four. Four o'clock is the shift change. Okay. And then we close at 10. Change, and then 10 p.m. is when you All end right. there? Now, we open at six. So at six o'clock is when the open, oh, that's awesome. Okay, six o'clock is when we open. Okay, so with this, when do you inspect, when does the owner inspect those checklists to make sure they're being done? When do you check in on that? Well. For us, um, with Chick Fil A, we're going to have multiple levels of leadership. So, okay. like my general manager of the store would walk through and kind of inspect um, and make sure these things are done. Okay. Because I'm going to hold him accountable when it comes time for them. Um, and so, for me, I will just at random take random. a look at what's going on. Correct. Okay. So I may not look at it necessarily today, but yet tomorrow I may look at it. Because again, um, I have multiple layers of management, and if they're following these checklists, it should, for the most part, always be done. Okay, but you follow, I mean, because what I see a lot of business, like there's a business I was working with there a couple weeks ago, and I'm talking to this person, and they say, we just cannot keep our retail products stocked. <laughs> we just can't. Every time we come in, no one has stocked the products. We just can't. We can't find people that want to stock the products. If, that, if you were running that retail store, what would be your suggestion for the entrepreneur who can't seem to get their employees to stock the stuff? <laughs> you fire them and get someone that will. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, uh, that's the easy solution. But okay. the reality is, the, whatever you're, it's important to you, yeah. they're going to make sure it happens. So okay. when I, when I, if I was coaching somebody on that, I'd probably say it clearly to the employees is not important enough you know, um, 
for, for them to do. Now, I'm going to say this real quick on behalf of probably 70% of America's small business owners that I see all the time. I mean, if I see 10 small business owners, I bet you seven of them do not have one thing, a checklist, period. They do not have a checklist for any position in their business. So you see hair salons, bakeries, restaurants, everywhere without checklists. Right. Is it required to have a checklist at Chick-fil-A? Um, Chick-fil-A Incorporated requires that we have systems in place to make sure the store works right. Okay. Whatever that may look like. Okay. For me, I don't want to be the person trying to manage every person's position. So we have checklists on okay. checklists to make sure that these things get done. All right. But really, it sounds like you have set times. I just want to look at this. This is look at, look at, look at the beauty of this document. This is like the holy grail of small business here. You can see. Can you, I don't know if you can see that tower. If you can see the times there. But you look here. You got, you know, the sinks are being cleaned at, at this time. The sinks are being cleaned over here. The bathroom. I mean, look at this beauty. But and I see a lot of businesses where these things are just not being done on a daily basis. That's correct. So. Okay, so the, ma the magic is in the checklist, it's in the follow-up, it's in those expectations. Now, developing the wowed customer, okay? Mm -hmm. In your mind, what does it mean to wow the customer? Um, for me, it's how are you taking care of the customer to the level that they did not expect, that they're literally saying, wow, holy moly, what just happened? Uh, we've taken our kids to Chick-fil-A, they come home with balloons. Mm -hmm. They did not expect that, they come home pumped up. Whose idea was that? Your idea? Was it corporate's idea? Who came up with the idea to pass up the balloons? Well, first of all, every store with Chick-fil-A uh, can be run how that operator feels. Okay. Okay. There's very um, there's certain mandated things. Balloons is not one of them. Okay. Um, but for my store, um, I have six kids, and so I know the impact of the balloons. Yeah. Um, and I know that when we're driving down the road and say we want to go eat somewhere, we get outruled by our kids. And so if we can make it where the kids are going, I want to go to Chick-fil-A. Frankly, mom and dad will probably go there just to shut them up. So your goal is to wow those kiddos? Absolutely. Okay. Um, now, Henry Ford once said, he says, it is not the employer who pays the wages. Employers are only handle the money. It is the customer who pays the wages. Mm -hmm. Now, um, what companies in your mind are known for wowing customers? Some, some of that I thought of was like, I thought of Whole Foods, mm -hmm. um, Apple, um, you've got uh, Southwest Airlines, Starbucks. Are there any other companies that you look to and go, man, they set the standard? Uh, Disney. Okay. Disney's Disney. phenomenal. Disney. Now, just as an example of wowing the customer, you told me a story the other day at church, which just blew I think Noel, your wife, your beautiful wife, told me the story at church. Yeah. You're going to Disney World, and somebody got sick, right? Yeah, one of my sons got dehydrated. It was towards the last days of, of Disney, and we said, hey, let's um, let's go. Let's get the park. Um, the Park Hopper Pass, which is an upgraded pass so that you can go from park to park. We said, we're going to go to every park. Okay. We got on there. Again, I have six kids, and we went about 30 feet in the main street, and he threw up everywhere. <laughs> just right there in the middle no, of Main Street. It. So I apologize, Mickey. You know, you had to clean your shoes, but that's how it works. Did you get it on his shoes? No, we actually, but okay. he might have. Okay. So, um, so anyway, um, we we went and had went we, we stayed in that one park for the rest of the day and we made sure we took care of our son and put it, took him in the air conditioning got him got water in his system and and everything was fine but I thought you know I paid for an upgraded you know uh, service but I wasn't able to do it because my son got sick yeah so I called and said you know is there a way that I can um, we had a good time we had fun but can I get a um, a refund on on that part. It probably would have been a refund of about two hundred dollars. Yeah, and they they responded with, um, you know, send us the information, send us your tickets, and I sent it all to them, and they were verifying that what I was saying was accurate. And then they asked me, so are you telling me you didn't have a magical time? And you know, I was like, well, you know, my son got sick. You know, I I guess I guess we didn't. Yeah. You know, but you know, the rest of the days we had a good time. So she turns around and says, well, because you didn't have a magical time on that day, and I noticed on the, on the day before that you guys left early, and I said, well, we did leave early because my kids were all worn out. Yeah. And she said, so we're going to go ahead and send you two free all-day park hopper tickets for your entire family, which is eight of us. You know, I think it was an $1,800 value or something of that insane nature, um, um, so that next time you can come and, um, and have an, a magical experience. And we did, and, and we went back a couple of years later. I told hundreds about this story yeah and uh and and when i look at that i always go to that with chick-fil-a saying 
I remember what the Disney did for me, and I was walking away going, "That's amazing." Now I'm going to give. I'm going to. We're trying to help the folks out there that maybe have a business and for they're having a hard time because people always say you need to generate word of mouth. You ever talk to a business owner? They say, "Well, you know, if you ever talk to a successful company, they mm-hmm. say, well, all of our business comes from word of mouth." Well, that's wonderful, but how do you generate the word of mouth? And and so I'm just trying to give some ideas here, maybe to help the entrepreneur out there that feels like, well, they, that's great for Disney and that's great for Chick Fil A, but what about for my business? Mm-hmm. And so uh, one of the co- one of the companies I work with is an appliance store, and in this appliance store, I convince these guys to start making fresh baked cookies uh, every single day. They have all these great appliances. Right. I'm like, why don't you fire them up? You know. Make cookies, have milk. People come in, offer it to them. Well, you know, put out a tent out front, do some fun things, make you know, do inflatables for the kids on the weekend. And they're going, we're an appliance store. Why would we do inflatables? And I'm like, because humans buy appliances, and usually the humans who buy the appliances are the wives, and usually the wives have the kids. And if the kids come, Absolutely. then they plant, and they're just having a big booming year because we've got inflatables and cookies in the appliance store. So if, let's pretend for a second you put on the hat, thinking cap for a second. Right. You and I go in together and we buy uh, Arthur's Muffler Shop. Awesome. How can we wow the customer? What are some ideas you would have if we're, you know, instead of just giving me you know, that invoice where it's printed out on that old school paper mm-hmm. where it's like, e, 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 and it's e, half e, greasy? Half greasy, and the guy with the fingers yeah. that are all dirty, and he's typing on the computer keyboard that's just nasty, and he types with the two fingers, you know? Right. How do we go from there? to wowing the customer. We just replaced the muffler. How are we sure. going to wow them? Well, I would say, let's start with what is the experience when the person walks in. Okay. You know, the person is expecting, I mean, no one's thrilled to go to a muffler shop. Okay. You already know you're going to have to spend some money. You already know that you're going to have to um, um, do something you didn't want to do. So we're walking into the muffler shop, okay? We're yep. walking in. Let's, let's pretend this is our... There. Let's pretend this is our lobby. For some reason, it's it's doing a lot of Chick Fil A business too. But no. Well, anyway, so you have this muffler shop. You walk in the entrance here. Okay, talk to me about the experience that you would create here if you okay. had this muffler shop. So for me, when I walk into a lot of muffler shops, I would walk in. You probably smell um, the smell of gasoline. Yeah, um, true. Or, or oil. And oil. so it would be. What does it smell like? Yeah. Okay. So let's go with the smell. So you would identify. We don't have to get into the specifics tonight. Maybe unless you want to. But we want to talk about the smell. What would you make it smell like? Um, well, <laughs> fresh cookies is one thing. We have an appliance store that, that you know has great ovens. Cool. So we'll go with cookies. Great. Smell. Okay. Or what's, yeah. What's the next thing you do? Uh, I would you know look at you know who do you have running that front register? Who is the first mm. point of contact? So what do you see? Exactly. Now, real talk, talking real, something offensive for some people. I was working with a small business, and we had the least talented person in, the, and maybe in the world, um, who they were like, well, we'll just have them do the front desk because there's not really another discernible skills. We'll just put them up front. Well, this is a major, major company. I mean, a lot of a lot of stuff they put them up front. Well, it, it, it broadcasts. I mean, when the when customers come in and see this person, that's their first impression. Absolutely. And they put somebody who was like somehow related to the owner, who everyone in the room knew should be fired. They put them up front. And this person's like eating Cheetos when people are coming in. It just it looks crazy. So you're saying put a credible person up front. Right. Okay. What else would you do? So we're going to go ahead and staff this with a decent person. I'm going to put staff with a smile. Okay. What are we doing next? Well, if um, if we're really trying to wow them, um, you know, as soon as they come in, you know, offer them a, a drink or offer them a cookie. Okay. So you're going to offer some, um, maybe we could put down here the taste. You know, what's what's the taste like here? And right. then we're going to go with like a drink. We're going to go with some sort of, uh, uh, you know, some f- kind of food, I guess, here. Because they're going to be waiting on their muffler anyway. Now, there's a place in Austin. If you guys in Austin are watching this, and I know you are, there's a, a dermatology business in Austin. And these guys provide an unbelievable amount of free food when you're there for your dermatology appointment. You know, you and I go to a doctor's appointment. We don't want to wait. No one likes going to the doctor and reading yep. those old. People magazines from four four months ago, and these guys have uh, wraps. They have uh, sandwiches. They've got fruit displays, and I've you know people ask, well, you're a dermatologist. Why are you catering food? And they're like, well, people like to eat, <laughs> you know, and that's what they do. So you're saying in our muffler shop, you know, Arthur's muffler shop, woohoo! You would even right there talk about the drink, the food, the staff, the cookies. What else would you address? Right. I would uh, 
Well, it's the ambience. The sound, I'm, maybe. Um, yes. So that ambience. What kind of music are you, do you have? Do you have no music? Do you have... Gosh. Uh, I think you're helping somebody right now. So music. Yeah. Um, real talk. I went into a restaurant the other day. No music. Just no music at all. It's one of these downtown restaurants. I don't know. No, no music's odd. It's awkward. You know, I know mm -hmm. when we record this even, when there's no sound or background music, it's like you, you kind of go, like, oh man, it's quiet here. No music's odd, it's awkward. You know, I know when we record this even, there's no sound or background music, it's like, you kind of be like, oh man, it's quiet here. So, music. What kind of ambiance would you play in Arthur's Muffler Emporium? Um, something that's relaxing, because you're already uncomfortable. Um, okay. I mean, let's face it, most of the people that go into a muffler shop probably aren't experts on mufflers. You know, the, um, so what is... Um, something relaxing? Yeah. Like Sinatra, Nat King Cole, maybe something like that, kind of a... Absolutely. Okay, so we're going to do some Sinatra. Okay, now some other things I want to ask you here. You know, you are famous for making your Chick-fil-A stand out, okay? Mm -hmm. So during the holidays, you've got holiday lights everywhere. You built the world's largest iced tea out in front of that place. We did. You have built the world's largest snow cone, I believe, out in front of that place. We did. You've done some things. Would you do anything to make your muffler shop? I mean, if this is the highway right here. Would you do anything to make your muffler shop stand out? Oh, absolutely. We call it visual noise. Mm, visual what, noise. What kind of visual noise do you have on the outside of your restaurant? <sighs> You're helping somebody here. What kind of visual noise would you recommend, bro? Well, you had talked earlier about an inflatable. You know, um, you know, it just it depends on what you're looking for. You could put flags out there. Flags. You know, um, and if you're battling the city on the flags, put American flags on there. They probably won't, you know, stop you for putting American flags. But if you see five American flags flying in the front of a, a, a place, Oof. it's going to make you think about that place. Can you put communist flags, or you want to stick? You don't want to do like you know you North Korean flags. Them. You primarily American, patriotic. Now, real quick, I want to make sure, because I'm, I'm being serious though for a second. The reason why you're putting American flags is because, what again? City ordinances. Uh, that's my secrets right there. Is city ordinances sometimes are restrictive on things, but a lot of times on American flags, you're not as restrictive. But you want people to see your, see your place of business and, and get that visual noise. And for all the people watching this right now who are concerned about the, the, the municipal governments in which you live and the local city, I have found that it's always better to call ahead and to discover how big the fine is and to find out if you'll, make, if, if you'll be able to bring enough revenue in to really dwarf that fine. And that's kind of how I make my decision on what ordinances to follow. I'm not saying that you said that. That's just what I do, but I'm, I'm a sick freak. What else, what else would you do to really create the ambiance that you're into here? Anything um, else? I'm thinking here the bathroom at this muffler oh, shop absolutely. is always a disaster. Absolutely. Now, I, I'm a dude. You know how dudes, how, how we go to the bathroom as dudes. I mean, there's, there's a kind of a stand-up method we go with. Now, I'm in the dude's restroom at the muffler shop, and I'm finding myself wanting to, like, quarantine myself and, like, maybe look for an outside location or something because the bathrooms are so gross. Yeah. Would you jazz up that bathroom a little bit, bring some funk, bring some... You know, Absolutely. Ambiance to the bathroom. Yeah, let's make it a little more comfortable. You know, recliner, toilet, you know. Oh, really? Wow. Okay, so let's put a nice... <laughs> we really want to wow them. Okay, now real quick, just by doing this, I don't care what city you're in, if you're watching this right now, you own a muffler shop or any kind of business at all, really, if you went through this checklist and you said, how does my office smell? How does it look? How does it taste? How does it sound? What are the visuals? You're already going to experience a little bit of a wow. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. what I always tell customers, and I work with my, my consulting clients, is I say, they say, well, how do we know when we're done adding stuff? And I say, when the customer says, wow. And then they go, well, what, what do you mean? I said, well, at the house we used to have at uh, 89th and Lynn Lane there in Broken Arrow, it's a big old 6,000 square foot house, big old thing. And we just kept like just decking out the place to make it awesome until customers would pull up and go, wow. And people would make a buying decision before they even met us. They would mm -hmm. walk in and go, wow, is this your office? That's what you want, is that wow. Is there anything else, any kind of tricks that you would put in here to get that wow? Well, first of all, I don't look at those as tricks. Mm. Um, a, lot of, a lot of businesses, they, what I call, um, the phrase I like to use is they're trying to save their way to success. 
And so they don't want to invest in the cookies, and they don't want to invest in that mm. in that person out front or drinks or or having you know having great uh, a flower bed out front or whatever it may be. They yeah. don't want to invest in that, but it's so important that they invest in that because when that person walks away, we you talked earlier about word of mouth. All of a sudden, you got word of mouth, and and you don't have to put an ad in in a newspaper that you're going to get no results in. Yeah. Instead, you're spending that same hundred dollars, and you're giving away. You know, fifty dollars worth of cookies that month instead. Yeah. So you're so you're saying is is you're, it's not really a trick. You're more of just investing Absolutely. in the atmosphere. Now let's look at the cost just real quick for the business owner who says, "I have seven dollars," and I can relate to you because I worked at Applebee's and Target. I know mm-hmm. you started with nothing too. We've all come from somewhere to get where we are today. On this on the cookies, we're talking about a cost of maybe like fifty bucks a week. I mean, if you're making a lot of cookies, right? That's a lot of cookies. I mean, you're yes. getting crazy. Now, the staff person, that's just a matter of just staffing. So I can't really to tell you what the cost is. I can just say that if you got a dude working up front or in the back, you know, that's really pretty rough looking, you don't want to have them up front there. Correct. So really, in terms of cost, I mean, the, putting cookies in your restaurant or putting cookies, in this case, in your muffler store, only costs maybe 50 bucks a week, but it, it people leave and they tell their friends, like, oh, my gosh, this place had right. some cookies. Um, Especially this, in social media. They will, you know what, I just went there, I'm, I'm, at, I'm at Arthur's Muffler Shop enjoying a cookie, this is amazing. And I, I just, I see this all the time, but just as an example, there's a, a local business I work with um, that's uh, not in Tulsa, but it's, it's, out of, it's, it's uh, on the west coast there, and I work with these guys, and their store, every single day, somebody calls the owner and says, hey, no one's here for this shift. Hey, we're out of these certain retail products. Hey, um, no one's here to open the door. Hey, we have a customer that's frustrated that we're out of this product. Hey, you know, and, and, and then they focus on trying to sell the cheapest price possible for these appliances. Right. They try to focus on the cheapest price possible. And I've talked to these guys, and if they would do this, it would totally change the way they do business. Absolutely. Why don't they do it, Arthur? Because you, you've met, I bet you... Dozens and dozens of business owners have come to you and said, how do you always create that wow at Chick-fil-A? Because you're known all over Tulsa as being the guy who creates that experience. Why, why won't a business owner, why wouldn't a guy who owns a muffler shop be focusing on cookies, what people smell, what people see, what people taste, what people hear, what people see? Why aren't they doing that? I think a lot of it's just the mentality of really saving their way to success. Okay. And people people don't get it. They're nervous about it. it it's It's not... It's not the normal thing. It's they'll waste their money on all kinds of advertising, put stuff on the radio, but yet, you know, if they took that same amount of money and put it in there, um, then um, they would see a better result. And of course, then they can sell their products for more. Then they can they can afford the staff that's going to stay there on a regular basis. Uh, there's a lot of solutions that can come from being able to you know market your product better. JT, do you know what time it is? Um, four ten. It's it's Tebow time in Tulsa, oh. Jerusalem, baby. Tim Tebow is coming to Tulsa, Oklahoma Whoa. during the month of Christmas, December 5th and 6th, 2024. Tim Tebow is coming to Tulsa, Oklahoma and the two-day interactive Thrive Time Show that Business really Growth good. Workshop. Uh, yes, folks, thing. put it in your calendar this Love December, the month of Christmas, Love December 5th and 6th. Okay. Tim Tebow is coming to Tulsa, Oklahoma and the Thrive Time Show two-day interactive business growth workshop. Whoa. We've been doing business conferences here uh, since 2005. I've been hosting business conferences since, since 2005. What year were you born? Uh, 1995. Dude, I've been hosting business conferences since you were 10 years old. And a lot of people you know, have followed Tim Tebow's football career on the field uh, and off the field. And off the field, the guy's been just as successful as he has been on the field. Now, the big question is, JT, how does he do it? Hmm. Well, they're going to have to come and find out because I don't know. Well, I'm just saying, Tip Tebow is going to teach us how he organizes his day, how he organizes his life, how he's proactive with his faith, his family, his finances. He's going to walk us through his mindset that he brings into the gym, into business. It is going to be a blasty blast in Tulsa, Jerusalem. 
Folks, I'm telling you, if you want to learn branding, you want to learn marketing, you want to learn search engine optimization, you want to learn social media marketing, that's what we teach at the Thrive Time Show two-day interactive workshop. If you want to learn accounting, you want to learn sales systems, you want to learn how to build a linear workflow, you want to learn how to franchise your business, that is what we teach at the two-day interactive Thrive Time Show business workshop. You know, over the years, we've had the opportunity to feature Michael Levine, the, the PR consultant of choice for Nike, for, for Prince, for Michael J. Jackson, what do you got? The top PR consultant in the history of the planet has spoken at the Thrive Time Show workshops. We've had Jill Donovan, the founder of RusticCuff.com, a company that creates apparel worn by celebrities all throughout the world. Jill Donovan, the founder of RusticCuff.com, has spoken at the two-day interactive Thrive Time Show business workshops. We have the guy, we've had the man who's responsible for turning around Harley Davidson, a man by the name of Ken Schmidt. He has spoken at the Thrive Time Show two-day interactive business workshops. Folks, I'm telling you, these events are going to teach you what you need to know to start and grow a successful business. And the way we price the events, the way we, we do these events, is you can pay $250 for a ticket or whatever price that you can afford. What? Yes! We've designed these events to be affordable for you, and we want to see you live and in person at the two-day interactive December 5th and 6th Thrive Time Show Business Workshop. Everything that you need to succeed will be taught at the two-day interactive Thrive Time Show Business Workshop, December 5th and 6th in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And the way we do these events is we teach for 30 minutes, and then we open it up for a question and answer session so that wonderful people like you can have your questions answered. Yes, we teach for 30 minutes, and then we open it up for a 15-minute question and answer session. It's interactive. It's two days. It's in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We've been doing these events since 2005, and I'm telling you, folks, it's going to blow your mind. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the Thrive Time Show two-day interactive business workshop is America's highest rated and most reviewed business workshop. See the thousands of video testimonials from real people just like you who've been able to build multi-million dollar companies. Watch those testimonials today at thrivetimeshow.com. Simply by clicking on the testimonials button right there at thrivetimeshow.com, you're going to see thousands of people just like you who've been able to go from just surviving to thriving. Whoa. Each and every day, we're going to add more and more speakers to this all-star lineup. But I encourage everybody out there today, get those tickets today. Go to thrivetimeshow.com. Again, that's thrivetimeshow.com. And some people might be saying, well, how do I do it? What do I do? How does it work? You just go to thrivetimeshow.com. Let's go there now. We're feeling the flow. We're going to thrivetimeshow.com. Again, you just go to thrivetimeshow.com. You click on the business conferences button and you click on the request tickets button right there. Um, the way I do our conferences is we tell people it's $250 to get a ticket. Yep. Or whatever price that you can afford. And the reason why I do that is I grew up without money. Uh, JT, you're in the process of building a super successful company. Um, yep. Did you start out with a million dollars in the bank account? No, I did not. Nope. Did not get any loans, nothing like that. Did not get an inheritance from parents or anything like that. I had to work for it. And I uh, am super grateful I came to a business conference. That's actually how I met you, met Peter Taunton. I met all these people. So if you're out there today and you want to come to our workshop, again, you just got to go to thrivetimeshow.com. You might say, well, who's speaking? We already covered that. You might say, where's it going to be? It's going to be in Tulsa, Jerusalem, Oklahoma. And someone says, Tulsa, Jerusalem. Uh, it's, I'm really trying to rebrand Tulsa as Tulsa, Jerusalem, sort of like the Jerusalem of America. But if you go to, if you type in Thrive Time Show and Jinx, you can get a sneak peek or a look at our office facility. This is what it looks like. This is where you're headed. It's going to be a blasty blast. You can look inside, see the facility. We're going to have hundreds of entrepreneurs here. It is going to be packed. Now, for this particular event, folks, uh, the seating is always limited because my facility isn't a limitless um convention center you're coming to my actual home office and so it's going to be packed who you you're going to come who you I'm, I'm talking to you you can just get your tickets right now at thrivetimeshow.com and again you can name your price we tell people it's 250 dollars or whatever price you can afford and we do have some select vip tickets which gives you an access to meet some of the speakers and those sorts of things and those tickets are 500 dollars. it's a two-day interactive business workshop over 20 hours of business training we're going to give you a copy of my newest book the Millionaire's Guide to Becoming Sustainably Rich. You're going to leave with a workbook. You're going to leave with everything you need to know to start and grow a super successful company. It's practical, it's actionable, and it's Tebow time right here in Tulsa, Jerusalem. Get those tickets today at thrivetimeshow.com. Again, that's thrivetimeshow.com. Hello, I'm Michael Levine, and I'm talking to you right now from the center of Hollywood, California, where I have represented over the last 35 years 
58 Academy Award winners, 34 Grammy Award winners, 43 New York Times bestsellers. I've represented a lot of major stars and I've worked with a lot of major companies. And I think I've learned a few things about what makes them work and what makes them not work. Now, why would a man living in Hollywood, California, in the beautiful sunny weather of LA, come to Tulsa? Because last year I did it and it was damn exciting. Clay Clark has put together an exceptional uh, presentation, really life-changing. And I'm looking forward to seeing you then. I'm Michael Levine. I'll see you in Tulsa. Thrive Time Show two-day interactive business workshops are the world's highest rated and most reviewed business workshops because we teach you what you need to know to grow. You can learn the proven 13-point uh, business systems that Dr. Zellner and I have used over and over to start and grow successful companies. I mean, we get into the specifics, the specific steps on what you need to do to optimize your website. We're going to teach you how to fix your conversion rate. Uh, we're going to teach you how to do a social media marketing campaign that works. How do you raise capital? How do you get a small business loan? We teach you everything you need to know here during a two-day, 15-hour workshop. It's all here for you. You work every day in your business, but for two days you can escape and work on your business and build these proven systems so now you can have a successful company that will produce both the time freedom and the financial freedom that you deserve. You're going to leave energized, motivated, but you're also going to leave empowered. The reason why I've built these workshops is because as an entrepreneur, I always wish that I had this. And because there wasn't anything like this, I would go to these motivational seminars, no money down, real estate, Ponzi scheme, get motivated seminars, and they would never teach me anything. It was like you went there and you paid for the, the big chocolate Easter bunny, but inside of it, it was a hollow nothingness. And I wanted the knowledge, and they're like, oh, but we'll teach you the knowledge after our next workshop. And the great thing is we, we have nothing to upsell. At every workshop, we teach you what you need to know. There's no one in the back of the room trying to sell you some next big uh, get rich quick, walk on hot coals uh, product. It's literally, we teach you the brass tacks, the specific stuff that you need to know to learn how to start and grow a business. And I encourage you to not believe what I'm saying, and I want you to Google uh, the Z66 auto auction. I want you to Google elephant in the room. Look at Robert Zellner and Associates. Look them up and say, are they successful because they're geniuses or are they successful because they have a proven system? When you do that research, you will discover that the same systems that we use in our own business can be used in your business. Come to Tulsa, book a ticket, and I guarantee you it's going to be the best business workshop ever and we'll even give you your money back if you don't love it. We've built this facility for you and we're excited to see you. And now you may be thinking, what does it actually cost to attend an in-person two-day interactive Thrive Time Show business workshop? Well, good news. The tickets are $250 or whatever price that you can afford. What? Yes, they're $250 or whatever price you can afford. I grew up without money, and I know what it's like to live without money. So if you're out there today and you want to attend our in-person two-day interactive business workshop, all you got to do is go to thrivetimeshow.com to request those tickets. And if you can't afford $250, we have scholarship pricing available to make it affordable for you. I learned at the Academy in Kings Point in New York, octa non verba. Watch what a person does, not what they say. Whoa. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. Today I'm broadcasting from Phoenix, Arizona, not Scottsdale, Arizona. They're close, but they're completely different worlds. And uh, we have a special guest today. Uh, definition of intelligence is if you agree with me, you're intelligent. And so this gentleman is very intelligent. I've done this show before also, but very seldom do you find somebody who lines up on all counts. And so Mr. Clay Clark, he's a friend of a good friend, Eric, Eric Trump. But we're also talking about money, bricks, and how screwed up the world can get in a few and a half hour. So Clay Clark is a very intelligent man. And there's so many ways we could take this thing but I thought, uh, since you and Eric are close, Trump, what were you saying about what Trump can't, what Donald, who's my yeah. age, and I can say or cannot say? What, well, I have to, first of all, I have to honor you, sir. I want to show you what I did to one of your books here. 
There's All a right. guy by the name of Jeremy Thorne, who was my boss at the time. I was 19 years old, working at Faith Highway. I had a job at Applebee's, Target, and DirecTV. And he said, have you read this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad? And I said, no. And uh, my father, may he rest in peace, um, he didn't know these financial principles. So I started reading all of your books and uh, really devouring your books. And I went from being an employee to self-employed, to the business owner, to the investor. And I owe a lot of that to you. And I just wanted to take a moment to tell you, thank you so much for allowing me to, to, to achieve success. And then I'll tell you all about Eric Trump. But I just want to tell you, thank you, sir, for changing my life. Well, not only that, Clay, you know, thank you, but you've become an influencer. You know, more than anything else, you've evolved into an influencer where your word has more and more power. So that's why I uh, congratulate you on becoming. Because as you know, there's a lot of fake influencers out there, too, or bad influencers. Yeah. So anyway, I'm, well, I'm, I'm glad you and I agree so much. And thanks for reading my books. Yeah. That's, that's the greatest thrill for me today. Not a thrill, but recognition is when people, young men especially, come up and say, I read your book, changed my life, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. I learned at the Academy, King, King's Point in New York, octa non verba, watch what a person does, not what they say. Whoa.